Welcome to Toyota Time with Tim the Toolman. This is a continuation of the repair we're doing to Sean's rig, replacing the transmission. Now we have the new transmission here. The Toyota dealership can be helpful, but a lot of times they aren't so knowledgeable, so they couldn't really answer a question like, does the new transmission come with all these sensors, blah, 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 and then shifter lever goes there. This little doodad, you know, does it come with all that? And they couldn't answer that, so what we did on Sean's transmission is we stripped everything off that we can pull off easily. We stripped off the temperature sensor. We stripped off these connectors for the fluid lines. We took off the park neutral position switch. And so this is how the transmission came to us from Toyota. So it comes with almost everything, but we'll show you the things that it didn't come with that we're glad we pulled off. Number one, this neutral position switch right here slides onto this rod right here and then bolts in here. So we need to put the old one back on. It didn't come with the new one. So that's number one. Number two is that anything that has to do with brackets that hold the wiring harness onto the transmission, take those with you. Don't leave those on your old transmission if you're swapping it out. So take all the associated bolts that hold uh, on the brackets and different stuff. So take it all with you. Take more, more is better than less, okay? So stuff like this. Then we have the shift lever. So it definitely didn't come with this. This goes on the driver's side. It slides on here. Right, like so, and then zip tie the nut and the washer on there so we know what goes where. Another thing that didn't come with this tube, I don't know exactly what this tube is, but it connects over here. It basically connects from the transmission to the transfer case. What it does, I'm not 100% sure. It's some, some type of breather, I guess, that it takes pressure from the transfer case, goes through here, and this is a breather right here. So that's the only thing I could think of is that it's transferring pressure. That's my educated guess, okay? This is just a cap that's protecting the seal, this output shaft seal. When you're doing this, do yourself a favor. Take a bunch of pictures because you might not remember exactly where everything goes. And it'll just help you as a reference to go back and say, okay, oh yeah, I remember where that little wiring bracket goes. It goes here. Another thing that if you can do is that we have my rig as a template. So if we do run into problems, you know, everything should be very similar. So we can look at my transmission to see, oh, where did that bracket go in case we don't have a picture for it. So if you have a buddy that has another third gen 4Runner, we'll have him come over and help you out. One thing that we notice is that, okay, you got your torque converter right here. They put this bracket in for the shipping. So this basically clamps the torque converter in there so it can't move around and fall out. Because this slides onto a shaft, a spline shaft, and it could actually fall out during shipping. So this is just a metal bracket to hold it in place during shipping. So we have to pull this off. Another thing we have to do to get this ready is that what they do when they rebuild is that they test them on some type of machine, they fill up the torque converter and then they drain it. So we're gonna have to pull this torque converter off and pre-fill it with a little bit of automatic transmission fluid so when we start it up, it's not dry and then go from there. Our next step is we're gonna take this bracket off and we're gonna pull the torque converter out and just see if it has any fluid in it and we're just gonna pour some in there and then put it back in. So we've got the shift lever connected up, tightened up with a 12 millimeter nut. So if you see on the other side how this park neutral switch works, when you put this switch on here, it slides onto the shaft. See this turns, this is basically a shaft that goes all the way through the transmission and turns. So this is how it will turn the switch and let you know if it's in neutral or park. So maybe if this thing is bad, it's basically telling the computer that, hey, you're not in park and it won't start. So when these things go bad, at least that's the way I understand it, that if this goes bad and you can't start your vehicle, it could be because it's a bad park neutral safety switch. We got this travel bracket out of the way. It just went on like so, something like that. And now we're gonna slide this out, torque converter, and just see if it has any oil in it. Kind of heavy. So I'm gonna pour out. Kind of hard to tell. This is all new to us. Uh, we don't know 100% how to pre-fill this. I think maybe we just pour some in there and get some in there so it's not starting out dry, and then slide it back together. It looks like they've got some in there already. It looks like we could just pour some in there. So, all right, let's set this down on the bench. So we got the torque converter on the bench. We got some automatic transmission fluid and 
We're just gonna pour some into the torque converter and then just see how full we can get this without it spilling over because ultimately we're gonna have to be able to put it sideways like this and go back into the transmission. So we don't want so much to where it's gonna just come pouring out on us. So online a guy said you can get about a quart, quart and a half in there, but I don't know, we'll, we'll figure this out. Just gonna pour some in there. You can look down, it's kind of bubbling. It almost looks like this thing was pre-filled. You said Toyota said this wasn't pre-filled, right? Well, they said they fill it to test it and then they drain it. So I'm sure some fluid gets stuck in the torque converter. As we saw, there was definitely fluid in there. Yeah. It doesn't seem like much is going anywhere. So we poured a little automatic transmission fluid in here. We shook it around, blah, 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 and tilt it and fluid wants to start coming out. See that? So even though Toyota said that they didn't pre-fill it, it evidently looks like it's pre-filled. Like after they tested it, they left it full or mostly full. So we're just gonna leave it and assume that it's full because pouring stuff in there, it just wants to come right back out. So I don't think we can really get any more in there. So hopefully it is full. We shook this thing around and tilted it on its side and fluid wants to come out every time we tilt it so it seems like it's full would you concur i don't see how we can get any more in there if it's going to start pouring out as soon as we turn it sideways because it's got to go into the transmission that way so i guess what we're trying to tell you the moral of the story is make sure that this has some fluid in it you don't want to start it up dry from everything that we've seen by pouring a little bit in there and turning it sideways and shaking it around to see like it just has to settle or like bubbles got to work their way out it looks like there's quite a bit of fluid in there because as soon as we turn it sideways the way we're going to have to get it into the transmission it starts to leak out a little bit so we pretty much know that there's transmission fluid in there and we're figuring we're safe to, to put it in and start it in this fashion. Anyways, we gotta slide this thing back in now. If you're doing this, just make sure it's not dry. You don't wanna start the new transmission with a dry torque converter. So now we gotta get this thing slid back in. Obviously that side goes towards the transmission. And it's like slid onto the first shaft. And then you gotta play around with this thing to get it onto the second shelf. That's not all the way in. I don't think so. Do one more. There we go. That slid in finally. You just gotta jiggle it around and get the splines to light up. Now I'm gonna grab that clamp and just make sure that it's seated all the way, but it feels like it's seated all the way. If I put that clamp on and it looks like it meets up fairly well, then I know that it's all the way seated on the next gear. Yeah, so checking with this clamp, I know that if it wasn't slid all the way on to the inner gear, or the inner splines, this traveling bracket wouldn't fit on, so we've got it all the way seated. There it is there. So now we're ready to jack this thing up and get the transmission in. Okay, what you're looking at is the flex plate. On an automatic transmission, you have a flex plate. On a manual transmission, you have a flywheel. Now, originally, we were of the thinking that while we're in here, we should replace this, thinking like, well, it's a lot of labor to get all the way back in here. But we're kind of thinking now that if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we're thinking that most often, these flex plates will probably last the life of the vehicle. So we're gonna roll the dice and not mess with it. Also, we could look behind there, there's just like a tiny little bit of oil here, maybe from where the oil pan seats with this housing that houses the rear main seal. So if you take the flex plate off, then you can get to the rear main seal. His is showing no signs of leaking at all. And again, we're thinking along the same lines, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So instead of messing with the seal and pulling out and putting a new one in, we're gonna roll the dice that this seal is gonna last him much longer. He only has 160,000 miles on this engine. So we're thinking by the time this thing needs a rear main seal, you either just leave it and let it leak and add oil when you have to. The only thing that could happen that would force our hand to, to pull the transmission again is if this flex plate goes. But we're thinking more than likely, odds are in our favor that this is never gonna fail. The engine will have a major failure, maybe head gasket or something that might cause Sean to just junk the engine and replace it with another one. So we're gonna not gonna mess with it. We might live to regret it, but hopefully not. So we're gonna leave this alone. We're gonna leave the rear main seal alone. We're just gonna reinstall the transmission without doing anything with the flex plate or the rear main seal. So one thing I wanted to mention that the pictures I've seen where the flex plates crack, they crack 
kind of like a uh, hexagonal. They crack like here, then here, like right around this bolt pattern here. So this is where the cracks originate. Sooner or later, they crack all the way and it makes kind of like a unique kind of ticking sound, sort of like a valve lifter noise, but different, you know, kind of like a ticking, kind of screeching kind of noise. And so this is where you're looking for cracks on these if you're gonna inspect it. This, this is where the common area of where these all fail. His is showing no signs of cracking at all. All the gear teeth that the starter makes contact with look good. So again, we're leaving this alone and we're just gonna reinstall the transmission as is. Okay, now is the time where we're jacking this thing up. We're gonna get it pretty close and then we're gonna pull the transmission towards the engine and then see how things are lining up. And then we'll do the fine adjustments with the adjusters on the transmission jack itself. One of the adjusters is right here. This does the tilt of the transmission down and up and so I could already tell based off of how this it's jacking up that it needs to be tilted more bell housing up. So I'm turning this knob counterclockwise to adjust it to where it's going to be more square with the engine. So I go a little So it's a jack it up, shimmy it forward. angle looks pretty good and then what you can't see here on this transmission jack there's also this one right here this does the the side to side so the this front one here does the up and down of the tilt this one will do the side to side we'll just have to get it close and then mess with these and try to get the alignment pins to line up all right so we first got the transmission up about the right height we pulled it closer to the engine where the bell housing will meet up with the engine and we got it pretty close and then we did a little bit of adjustment of the the tilt of up and down that would either lower the bell housing or raise it up to meet up more square with the engine so we got that pretty close and then the last adjustment to where we can get the transmission to slide together with the alignment pins is I did a little bit of a side to side adjustment with the other lever so I just tilted the transmission a little bit counterclockwise and boom it slid in you'll know when it works because the alignment pins will allow the transmission to slide right up against the engine which is what we have right now so now we're going to get our bolts out and get all the bolts started and then get those tightened up to where the transmission is now tight to the engine. So now we're getting all the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. All these bolts, they're all the same size. You can't go wrong. You just start putting them into where they all came out of. The torque spec for the bolts that tighten the bell housing of the transmission to the engine are 53 foot-pounds. And then the two starter bolts are 29 foot pounds. There's six bolts that hold the transmission bell housing to the engine. Then you got two starter bolts. Okay, so you can see again the setup that we have. We have a bunch of long impact extensions. I got a half inch drive and I just cinched them all up in this fashion and using a swivel at the end with a 17 millimeter short impact socket. So we got them all cinched up now and now we're gonna transition to the torque wrench and torque them all to 53 foot pounds. And so you have two bolts on the passenger side, you've got two bolts on the driver's side, and then you've got two bolts on the top, so a total of six bolts. Okay, so we're just torquing all these to 53 foot-pounds. I got the two on the passenger side already, and now I'm working on the ones on the top. See how I'm sitting? Like if you have, either you have it jacked up or you have a truck like Sean's that's already jacked up. We don't even have this lifted up. His truck is just high from the body lift and the suspension lift. So I'm able to get my head and look straight over the top of the transmission and see what I'm doing. This is actually not a very hard transmission to pull because you can see everything pretty well. Okay, that one's good. Now I'm gonna work on the driver's side. You get the idea. Two more. So depending on how you orient your transmission jack, we decided to go in from the front and now where I need to work because the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna put the six bolts that hold the flex plate to the torque converter. And so I need to be working right where that jack is. So now what we did is we placed a six ton jack underneath the back of the transmission 
to hold it in place so now we can remove the transmission jack out of the way so I can work where I need to work near the bell housing to get the bolt started. We're gonna unstrap the transmission from the jack and lower the jack down and basically get it out of our way so I can work underneath that area. If you had the jack this way in a different orientation, maybe you wouldn't have to move it out of your way for this next step to attach the flex plate to the torque converter, but the way we did it, we have to get it out of the way. Okay, the jack is going to now come down. This Harbor Freight was a pleasant surprise. It actually drops down pretty slow and controlled. Like, look at that control that this thing has. I was surprised. I thought it might just drop the transmission down in a big clunk, but this thing has a lot of modulation, so it's pretty nice. I highly recommend buying one of these jacks if you're going to pull a transmission. It's pretty good. Now, just like we separated the transmission from the engine, we're going to reverse the procedure. So now that we got the transmission securely bolted up and torqued to the engine, now I have to have Sean turning the crank clockwise, that's the way the motor turns, until I can see where one of the female threads on the torque converter lines up with the hole on the flex plate. And then once that happens, then we get it connected. And then we'll have to turn it, go to the next one, get the next one connected, get them all cinched up just like hand tight. And then I'm gonna see if I can get a torque wrench in there. So Sean turned the crank pulley bolt and I was able to get this one started right here. And hopefully now, with that one started, it's gonna take the torque converter with it. I'm gonna be able to get the next one, then the next one. So that first one, I didn't bother getting any Loctite on, but I'll get it. I'll know that that's my sixth one, so I'll get some Loctite on. But I'm hoping now, when he turns it, the torque converter comes with it. So go ahead and turn it, Sean. Yep, it's going with it, good. Okay. A little bit more. Okay, stop right there. So now I see the next one where it's a good spot for me to get my fingers in there and get it started. This one, now I'm gonna start putting Loctite and getting them on there, okay. You get the idea. He's gonna turn it to where I can get the next one in, put a little Loctite on the threads, put it in there, turn it and get the next one started. If you want a relation of where I'm looking, right here you have your front differential. You've got your CV shaft on the passenger side. So I'm looking right in between this cross member here. This is your steering rack. I'm looking right through this hole. This is a, the best vantage point that I could see. On the driver's side, you can't really see very well. This is the best bird's eye view to seeing what you're doing right through this hole. One thing that I just realized we got pretty lucky on is that before you slide the transmission in and connect it up to the engine, you might want to get one of the female holes of the torque converter right about in that area. Like if I was looking uh, from the engine towards the transmission, maybe like in the seven o'clock position, because since this is the easiest access to get a bolt started, it'd be nice to have one right there in position so when you turn flex plate with the engine to get it in position it's right there where it's easily accessible I, I had to fit it in like more close to the oil pan which is a little bit harder to get in there with my fingers so that's something to think about is that before you get the transmission in place and it, you're getting it lined up with the engine just make sure that one of the female threads of the torque converter is lined up in about that seven o'clock position to where it would be really easy for you to get the first bolt started. So I'm getting my hand in between the cross member and the steering rack. I'm going up in between here to where I can work with my hands and get the bolt started. So it seems a pretty, pretty good access to go right in through here. I'm looking through this area right here. So right now I'm just using a ratcheting gear wrench, a flexible head, just kind of cinch them up snug not torquing anything yet or getting it to a final tightening point. So you see I have a flex head 14 millimeter. And so I'm just gonna slowly bring them up a little bit tighter and then I'm gonna see if I can get a torque wrench in there. Maybe we can. Okay, here's another thought what I'm gonna do. So I basically just had Sean here. Sean, there, say hi Sean. He was turning this thing over and over again and I just was slowly bringing up each bolt tighter and tighter. Now that they're all kind of cinched up tight with this gear wrench, I'm gonna back them off just like a little bit because one worry I have is that maybe I got one side a little bit tight a little bit too soon and then it's causing the flex plate to uh, kind of bend a little bit. So I'm basically, now that they're all kind of cinched up and the torque converters basically pulled up snug to the flex plate, I'm gonna have Sean now go around the whole circumference again, the whole diameter. I'm gonna back off each one just a little bit 
And then, because then this way they'll all be pretty close to being, or the distance between the torque converter and the flex plate will now be really even. And then I'm going to re-tighten them again. So I don't know if this is necessary, but this is just one extra precaution that I'm going to do is that now I'm just going to back them off like maybe a quarter turn and then go all the way around and then re-tighten them again. So I know that I'm getting them more tightened evenly. I just had Sean keep going around and around and around. I kept on turning each bolt just a little bit and slowly cinched them up all the way around the whole circumference, all six bolts. And then now that I got them all cinched up pretty tight with that gear wrench, flex head, 14 millimeter wrench, now I'm going to see if I can get a torque wrench in there and then I'm going to bring all the bolts to 30 foot pounds. So we figured it out. You can't get the torque wrench in there. You go in the same place where I told you to put your hand, right in between the steering rack and the cross member here. So you can't get a torque wrench in there. 30 foot pounds. So we got all six bolts torqued to 30 foot pounds. So now that we have all the six bolts that hold the flex plate to the torque converter, now we can put this access plate back on and that is gonna be hard to show. But remember, it just has the four little nuts that hold it on there. And we're not gonna bother with any torque spec with that. It's just a little access plate. So we're just gonna get it on there, tighten it up, and then just get it on there. In case you wanna know, it's 13 foot pounds, but I'm not gonna bother torquing that. That's just a little plate for access. I'm gonna tighten enough to where it's not gonna fall off. This is that access plate that you have to pull off to get at the bolts for the torque converter. So this is the fashion C. It's got this little tab that faces the bell housing. So this side goes towards the engine, this side goes towards the bell housing. And you can't really screw it up because you can't get it on the other way. It only goes on one way. So if you put it up against the bell housing, it doesn't the bolt pattern doesn't match up, flip it around. Okay, so with that access plate, maybe a good idea is to check the threads before you put it on. One of the female threads on the bell housing was messed up. Maybe before you put the transmission in, that might be something to check because one of the threads was messed up on this rebuild. I don't know if it had a bunch of paint stuck in it or whatever, but it was tight the whole way. So maybe double check that. Now we're on the point where we're gonna get these lines hooked up again, the send and return lines. And when they gave the transmission to us, the line fittings are pointing up and they need to be pointing towards the front of the truck. So we had the transmission strapped and we didn't want to mess with the lines because we already had the straps in the way. But now that the transmission's in, I'm going to loosen these nuts on both the send and return fittings and turn them to where they're pretty much kind of parallel to the ground. I'm not going to tighten them up right away because we're going to keep them a little loose so it's easier to get the hard metal lines connected up and then I'll cinch everything up. It's a 19 millimeter nut that tightens these on. So right here on this one and then on this one. So now I'm gonna turn these fittings to where they're pointing towards the front of the truck. This nut that tightens it in place is a 19 millimeter on both of them. So we're gonna have to loosen that and just turn them to where they're kind of parallel to the ground facing forward forward of the truck and then I'm not going to cinch them up just yet because we're going to keep them loose while we get the hard metal lines connected up and the metal lines connected back up to the brackets and then once everything's kind of where it needs to be then I'm going to cinch both of these up. This is something to note so these fittings definitely have an end point so right now I can't turn this any more clockwise to get it to where it's facing the front of the vehicle so you have to back it off turn it around the other way counterclockwise and basically the the 19 millimeter nut that I mentioned earlier pushes the o-ring it's got a washer then an o-ring and that's what makes the seal so don't worry about the fact that this thing isn't all the way tightened you have to back it off to where you can get it pointing towards the front of the vehicle and then cinch up that nut that pushes the o-ring and seats it so that's what you got to do you got to back it off the other way if you've maxed out the threads. So I've got that one pointing in about the direction I want, then I'm gonna do the front one. So we've got the lines in loose right now. So you can see that the longer line or straighter line goes to the rear and routes along the bottom of path. And then the forward line goes on top of the back line here and runs along the top. And so now we have to get the little rubber grommets wrapped around the metal lines and then we're going to clamp it in place so that's our next step everything's loose right now so this thing this thing can move you can see it's just kind of flopping around there 
Same with this one, so I can move. So we haven't cinched anything down because we want to make sure that we can get the hard lines into the clamps. And then once that's all set, then we're going to tighten the fittings down and tighten everything up. So we finally have all the brackets in place that hold the metal line. So there's one here that connects it to the side of the bell housing on the passenger side. You got the next one over here that attaches to a bracket that goes right above the oil pan right there. And then you got the next one right here. And so that's just another one that's connected to the block. So those three brackets with the rubber grommets that kind of protect the metal lines. We got all those things cinched up. Now we're going to go back this way and now we're going to get these tight. We're going to get all these fittings tight. So the, the connection to the fitting and then the fitting to the transmission. We're going to get all these tight because now that we got the lines where we want them. So like I said, I'm using a 19 millimeter. I'm tightening the nut that tightens the fitting onto the transmission. So that one's tight. The rear one's tight. And then I'm going to get this front one. How tight? Tight. <laughs> I don't know. Use your best judgment. Can't get a torque wrench on there. At least not the type of torque wrench we have. Worst case scenario, if it leaks, you tighten it up a little more. So now that we got the fittings tight against the transmission, now we're going to use a flare nut wrench, 17 millimeter and cinch up the lines to the fitting. Again, how tight? I don't know. I mean, just cinch them up. Use your best judgment. So that one's tight. Let's get the front one tight and then we'll be done with this part. Don't fuck up like Timmy the Tool Man. Get the park neutral safety switch in first because I didn't get it in because we had the straps running here in the way so I decided to put it in later thinking that no problem but I should have got it in first before getting the line in the way so this rear line here was in the way of me getting the switch in place and so this nut right here is got a really light torque spec 35 inch pounds and so I didn't have a 22 millimeter 3 8 drive because the my inch pound torque wrench is a 3 8 drive so I just tighten it to where it started to turn the shifter uh, over here and then called it good because it's a super light torque spec, like it's almost like hand tight. So, and then these little metal tines are there to hold the nut in place if it loosens up so it can't turn, it won't fall off. So you just gotta push those back against the nut. There is another little washer that goes behind it, that's why this thing's loose. It broke on us and we don't have a replacement part. It was really brittle. So we might take this off in the future and get another washer behind there. But uh, right now it's just kind of floating there, but it's still going to hold the nut in place. It won't fall off. So moral of the story, get the park neutral safety switch either on before you put the transmission in or get it on before you put the rear line in place. We're now going to replace this shifter seat because this thing is really deteriorated. You can see all the little granules here. So he got this new shifter seat from Marlin Crawler. We'll put a link to it in the description. We took these 12 millimeter bolts out, these four on the top, and then you could pull this off. We got to get this thing out of here. How do we do this? I guess we just pry it out. Let's let me just try this little pointer thing. This thing is just falling apart. <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> it's basically just totally disintegrated. Yeah, it's just, parts as parts. This thing is just falling to pieces. Yeah, I guess it was kind of done, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was the shifter seat. So now we know why Marlin Crawler puts these little indented doohickeys. That's a technical term, people, doohickeys. We were trying first like this, going kind of like a gorilla trying to fight it. Then it was like, they had an aha moment. They put these in here like this so you can get it in and rotate it in place. Like so. Just like that. So that's why they put those indentations so you can get past these pins. That's it. It's down. So now we're at the step of getting this big, long, multi-connector wiring harness hooked back up to the transmission. So there was brackets that we took off so we wouldn't lose them on the transmission swap. Here's one of them right here. This one goes right in this position here and this clips in right there. And then there's another connection right over here. 
This one right here goes into a hole right there. We have the, the nut, the bolt for it. And then we have another bracket that's gonna go on right where this bolt is right here. It's gonna go up like that and this black thing's gonna slide into it. So it's just a quick, brief description of we're gonna get all the brackets back where they need to be in the wiring harness connected up to all the electrical connections on the sides of the transmission. Okay, I was mistaken. I was putting this bracket here, but it, it goes up there. So there's the bracket there. I got that bracket hooked up to the bell housing. I've got this one in. This plastic plug is gonna go in there. This plastic harness is gonna slide onto this metal bracket right there. And so that's where we're at. And then we're gonna start plugging stuff in. So this is all on the driver's side right now. So now on the opposite side of the transmission, on the passenger side, we brought the other cables over and then attached them. So on this side, you drape the other lines over the, to the passenger side. There's this one right here that connects up to the uh, park neutral safety switch. And then you have this other one right here. And this bracket goes right into, this hole goes right there. You bolt it on there onto this rear fitting. This one goes to your air fuel sensor. It goes to the sensor right here. So that electrical connection goes and connects up to the other one over here. You can't really mess this up because the connectors are unique. You can't accidentally connect the wrong one. So these are the other two on the passenger side of the transmission. The park, neutral, switch, and the air fuel sensor. All right. The setup we got here is using the transmission jack, we tried to get it as straight as possible to where straight meaning that the shifter is pointing straight up towards the body where the shifter is going to go in to the cab. So we got it set up and now we've, we're making sure we get the input shaft on the transfer case lined up with that rear seal right here. So we're like just doing slight adjustments. We don't want to tear that seal where we're going in. So again, we have these different knobs that we can adjust the side to side and the tilt up and down. This one in the rear. Yeah. Just a hair low right there. Yeah, it looks like, what's the gap like? So It looks pretty close. So it's pretty close, the gap's on the top now. There you go. Just a hair up. Hair up? Yeah, the whole unit, I think. There you go. Now if we can find that fucking gear. It's like you're, you're like literally in there, but the teeth have to line up now. How's it look? There we go. <laughs> Is that in? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Troy has a good technique. He put his foot on the rear output shaft that goes to the drive shaft to the rear differential. He put his foot on there and then pushed pressure towards the transmission by wiggling this heel back and forth to line up the splines and then boom, the thing went back together. So. This is a good technique. Once you have everything really lined up, but you're still fighting, getting it slid all the way onto the splines, use this technique. Have maybe a buddy watching the front, they're looking at the gap and seeing how everything's lined up. And then finally, everything looks good. Get your foot on the output shaft and just push and kind of wiggle your heel to get the splines to line up. So we now got the eight bolts that connect the transfer case to the transmission. You torque them all to 17 foot pounds. And then the next thing we got in is we're getting this transmission mount in place. And these are torqued, the two on this side, two on the opposite side are torqued to 53 foot-pounds. And this plastic knobber actually faces more forward. You see how it's offset? It faces more towards the oil pan, not the rear of the, of the truck. So that's the orientation to get it back in. So we're going to torque these down right now and then get everything else torqued up. So now that we got the transmission mount securely torqued to the transmission, 53 foot-pounds on those four bolts, two on this side, two on the other side. Now we're gonna get this front cross member in. It's cross member number three. So cross member number three goes right in here. And then now, depending on how high you had your transmission jack or whatever you got using a regular jack with some wood blocks or whatever, 
but you have to raise it up a little bit more to where now you can get that cross member and it helps if you have a nice friendly helper on the other side, Choi, and then we're gonna hold this cross member and then we're gonna slide the bolts in and the bolts are gonna go in from the front towards the back with the nut on the other side. So it's gonna slide in like so. So now we're sliding this in place. I don't know if it's gonna need a little persuasion. Need a little love. What? Oh, it's gonna Your transmission might be a little bit cocked a little bit, so we have to move it a little bit to get the bolts lined up. There we go. Oh. That's right. as far as it's gonna go, I think. All right, so now we're gonna have the fun part because this is tweaked in, so this has gotta, yeah, it's gotta go. We gotta spread the fucking thing. I'll get a breaker bar and see if we can cantilever it over. We have to do that with the rear one. This one's gotta, it's basically, it's gotta go fish that way. Hold on a second. Am I in there pretty good? Got it? No, you gotta go a little more on the back side. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Good. Hold on. Keep it right there, Sam. Good. You're in. <laughs> got it. So just to give you another illustration of where we hook this, we've got the breaker bar slid up underneath. There's a hole right there to capture it. And then I just put my foot right here and just push really hard while Choi got the bolts started in the hole. The frame is just kind of flexing a little bit, making it hard to get the cross member back in. So just need a little bit of brute strength persuasion to get them lined up. The torque spec for these four bottom 12 millimeter bolts that attach the transmission mount to the cross member is 13 foot pounds. 13 foot pounds is a pretty light torque spec. I personally torque in these mounting bolts just a little bit tighter than that because I just think that's a pretty light torque spec. So I'm going a little bit tighter, personal preference. Okay, so the torque spec for cross member number three is 48 foot pounds, 14 millimeter. So you can put a 14 millimeter like ratcheting wrench or whatever open end wrench on the back side and then tighten away. So now we're getting the drive shaft back in place. So remember that you made match marks if you followed our lead. So match up your match marks on the flange of the double carton and the flange of the output shaft of the transfer case. Put the washer on and then your nut. And then you just do that the same with all four of them. Get them on. And then we'll torque them down after we get the rear ones all back in. The bolts for the rear dry shaft that go to the third member, the bolts go in from the front and the nut and washer are going on the back. Yeah. So Choi is getting those all started. Bolt goes in the front, nut and washer on the back. And same thing, remember that there was match marks that you matched up this flange on the rear shaft to the flange on the third member. Okay, so we have the rear end jacked up and the rear end supported on six ton jack stand so we can rotate this drive shaft to where we can tighten the bolts. Now, it would be nice if we can get a socket and a torque wrench on there, but even with a swivel, you can't get on these bolts straight enough. It's supposed to be 54 foot pounds, so we just have the e-brake set, so now the drive shaft's not gonna turn on us, and we're using this big, long 14 millimeter to get a lot of leverage to tighten them up. So I don't think we could actually get a socket on there because the way the double carton joints formed, you really can't get a straight shot. We're just cinching them down really tight with a long 14 millimeter wrench. Since the cross member is just a little bit in the way, it's just easier to, to do it before we get the cross member in. So with the rear drive shaft, you can actually get a torque wrench on there. So you get a 14 millimeter box wrench and you get it on the back and then you can do this by yourself, but it's a lot harder to wedge yourself in there to get the leverage. So I have Choi holding the box end and I'm torquing at the 54 foot pounds. There we go. So we're putting in cross member number four, bolts in from the front, nuts on the back, 48 foot pounds torque spec. So we're getting the dynamic dampener attached to the transfer case, attaches with the two 17 millimeter bolts. 
and they're torqued to 28 foot-pounds. We're getting the front drive shaft in now. Remember that the slip yoke goes towards the transfer case and the other side goes towards the front differential. Again, these are 54 foot-pounds. It looks like we're gonna be able to get on this with a torque wrench. Let's just see. So can we get on there? I don't know, maybe with an extension. We'll have to see if we can get on with an extension. I'm using a small breaker bar to hold this thing steady, counter pressure, while I'm torquing these nuts. So 54 foot-pounds. I'm kind of wedging myself in here. We have a 14 millimeter box end on the back because the, the bolts on this front flange that go towards the front differential, the bolt goes into the front with a washer and then the flange nut goes on the back side. And again, the torque spec is 54 foot pounds. So I have Choi holding the back while I'm gonna torque at the 54 foot pounds. Maybe rotate it a little more. There we go, there's one. So you just watched us get the propeller shafts back in and torque to spec. The next steps, we messed up and lost the footage. It's nothing too major. You've already seen all the parts come off and you're just gonna miss the part where we're putting back on. I'm going to explain the next step so it's very clear and you could always go back in the video and consult the part where we took it off in case you're a little bit confused of how it goes back on. So number one, you gotta get your transmission dipstick tube back in. So the upper half slides into the bottom half with that little O-ring, it seats in, and then you get that one little bolt that holds it to the head in place. The torque spec for that is nine foot-pounds, but all it's holding is that light little thing, so if you don't wanna to torque at the spec, no big deal. Just get it on there tight. So you got your dipstick tube back in. The next thing you want to do is you want to get your starter back in. So remember you loosen those brake lines on the passenger side frame to, and you pulled it out of the way. The starter has to go back in the same way you took it out. So if you remember the starter motor is facing down, the solenoid is on top of the starter motor and the female electrical connections facing you, then you have the stud for the battery connection, the power from the battery that go into the starter is on the right hand side. So it slides in between the upper control arm and the exhaust, and then you gotta flip it and then bolt it back in. You can do this by yourself. You just hold the starter with one hand, getting a bolt in and threaded, and then you cinch it up. And then when you're ready to torque it to spec, I don't really think that you get an accurate torque spec because you have to use extensions at an angle. And when you put things at an angle, when you're talking about torquing things, it doesn't really work out accurately. But if you really want to know the torque spec, it's 29 foot-pounds. But if you just want to get the bolts nice and tight, that's fine too. That's what I did on my truck and that's what I did on Sean's because at an angle, you're really not getting an accurate torque spec. Now you have to connect that one electrical connection on the bottom of the solenoid and then you got to take that power cable from the battery, you got to slide it over the post and you cinch it down with a nut. And that's it. Your starter is all ready to go. Now if you want to see the full starter reinstallation, you can click on the link above here and you can go to the video that I made replacing the solenoid contacts and plunger and you can consult that if you want a better tutorial on how to get it back in and uh, hooked back up. The next thing you gotta do is you gotta go into your cab and you gotta get your shifter assembly back in. The first thing you gotta do when you're gonna get the shifter linkage back in is you're gonna get your four wheel drive shifter in first, the transfer case shifter. So you slide it into its spot, you push down on the upper plate that's spring loaded and then you gotta get that clip in. And the way Sean figured out a good method is that you get the clip under one side of one lip and then you just work it around to the other side and get the other side in. It's a very light spring clip, so it's not that hard to work with. So just push that top plate down, get one end of the clip in, work it around, and then get the other side in. And then you just put that rubber boot back in place and that's good to go. Then you get your other shifter linkage for the actual transmission. You get that in the spot that it needs to be, and then you get those eight bolts started and you torque those to spec if you want to torque them. The torque spec for those is 52 inch pounds, not foot pounds. They're a small bolt. So you cinch all those up, 
There's a couple electrical connections that you have to, to make to, for the uh, four-wheel drive shifter if you have the push button style. And then you have another shifter connection that hooks up to the actual transmission shifter to, to do the lights and all that deal. So you got those two connections. And then you just put your plastic trim pieces back on with the Phillips screws and the little pop-in tabs on the front near the floorboard. And then that, that's all good to go. Go back underneath the truck and hook up the shifter linkage. So the linkage from the shifter to the linkage on the transmission. If you want a torque spec for that, it's nine foot pounds. Nine foot pounds for that nut that holds the shifter linkage on the transmission to the shift linkage for the shifter. So the last step is what we did for the topping off the transmission fluid is when the engine was off, we topped it off to the top, top part of the cold level. We started it briefly, not knowing how much fluid was actually in there because we were a little bit unclear how much was in the torque converter and how much was in the transmission. So we started it briefly, took a sample with the dipstick. It was off the dipstick. We shut it off immediately. We topped it off again to the top of the cold level. We did that again and we kept on doing that to where now the level wasn't dropping anymore. So what we learned from that is that most likely there wasn't as much fluid in the torque converter as we thought. Remember in the video we poured some fluid in and we didn't see the torque converter actually soaking up the fluid so we figured that there was a lot of fluid in there. In retrospect there probably wasn't much fluid in there. There was some residual fluid but there wasn't much. How you top that thing off before putting it together I really don't know. And uh, I did some research and I couldn't find any real good information on it. I don't think you're doing any damage by starting it briefly letting the transmission run for a little bit and then shutting it off and then checking the level again. And so once we got the level stable, then we ran it for a while, took it for a test drive and then brought it back into my garage with the temperature at operating temperature, which Toyota says is between 158 and 176. And then we topped it off to the top of the hot level, knowing that we were in that operating temperature. And then you're done with the job. So. You might, during your test drive, you might just want to make sure it, it's shifting. The shift points are all where they should be. It's going into reverse, and that's kind of what we did when Sean and I did a test drive in his truck. That's the end of the job. It was a big job. It's a very doable job for a do-it-yourselfer. We did this whole thing on our backs in my garage. A transmission jack is very, very helpful. Instead of trying to muscle it with a regular jack, you know, with wood blocks or whatever. Make the investment and get a transmission jack. Harbor Freight sells a pretty darn good one for 200 bucks. I know people don't think Harbor Freight stuff is that good, but my experience with some of their products is their stuff is pretty darn good. And the price point is awesome for uh, do it yourself or that's not gonna be using this thing day in and day out. So transmission jack really helped make the installation and removal of the transmission and transfer case a lot easier. Another hang up we had, was even though the transfer case was all lined up and you could see that it was slid in most of the way, there's just that last little bit that you have to get the splines to on the output shaft of the transmission to line up with the input shaft on the transfer case. And Choi did that method where he put his heel on the rear drive shaft flange. He just rotated his heel and pushed in and then finally got the line up. Do you have to do it with the foot? No, you could probably get underneath the truck and, and push with your hand while rotating it to have the splines made up and then push it in. So you don't necessarily have to use your foot, but the method of pushing towards the transmission while rocking that output shaft to the rear drive shaft was the key to getting it to line up and then finally suck right into the transmission. Other than that, there was the, the problem with the cross members, the frame wanted to, to move on us after we got the second cross member out and we had to use a lot of manual force with the pry bar in order to get the first cross member in. Once the first cross member's back in, then the second one went easier. So that seemed to be a little bit of a hang up. Other than that, if you take your time, use this video as a tutorial because we pretty much showed you, take your time getting all the electrical connections undone before you try to remove anything and you just take your time getting everything back together. Remember taking some pictures of where all those brackets were for the, for the wire loom would be helpful because actually Sean took some pictures 
before we took some things apart so it was a good reference like oh yeah that's where that that bracket went or that's how the wire loom connected up you know above the transmission so take some extra pictures for as a reference is a good thing and get yourself a buddy to help you because it was kind of nice to have Sean turning the crankshaft bolt as I was doing bolts for the flex plate to the torque converter connection so definitely having a friend help you is very helpful so this concludes a very long job we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and we'll be back with more videos thanks for watching thanks for subscribing if you're a subscriber and if you're not a subscriber I don't know why you're not subscribing subscribe all right bye bye